British YouTuber Wendell gets millions of views on his videos about broken Britain, where he walks around the high streets, the fallen high streets of the UK, speaking to homeless, addicts, and just the locals of the area, asking them for their opinion on it. What better place to do a podcast on broken Britain than in a pub in the Midlands? Check out this episode. Think you might enjoy it. Well, yeah, there's probably a question. When you walk up to a homeless person, do, you, do, do they are they aware they're on camera? Yeah. And they're fine with it? Yeah. There's a there's um there's generally a little conversation yeah. that happens before. Because yours isn't non-stop, no cuts. You literally no. cut, cut, cut. Yeah, a lot of the time, like I'd like them to be uncut mm -hmm. interactions. But there's a lot of like, you know that these people are in quite vulnerable situations. Exactly, yeah. And there's a lot of things that, you know, just fall into quite a relaxed conversation that I don't think yeah. need to be shown to the world, even though they're consent to the conversation. Yeah. So that's why I chop. Yeah, so you're thinking there. about, uh, although that makes sense for the video, it's not fair on that person to put it in. Yeah. 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 I, um, I think that like little like parts of like their personal yeah. information, like their story, like their origin story about yeah. how they got to that point, yeah. you know. And sometimes they're, they're not aware that they're opening up as much as they are. Mm -hmm. So like, I think that it's important to have like a filter of ethics. Yeah. And um, like you've told me loads of stuff that you didn't put in the video. You've said this happened today. Yeah. Then I've watched the video and I've thought, I oh, left that bit out, that makes sense. Yeah. And it was harsh to leave that in. S some of it would, you know, like for, for the clickability and watchability yeah. of YouTube would be, would make like watchable content, but it's not fair. Yeah. Um, but I definitely understand there is a line. Well, you said to me, I don't know, we won't mention which video it is because people might find it. Um, you said, I was talking to a, a woman who was um, R worded. I don't want to demonetize if I say that word. Yeah. Um, you didn't, I don't think you told me who she was, but I could tell by yeah. the video. And you, there was no mention of any of that in the video. You didn't no. even know she was in any, at any point in any danger. It was just a woman. Also, like, like that, obviously she told me that on camera, yeah. but it had zero relevance to yeah. the narrative of the video. Yeah. Um, to what to what I was trying to explore when I made that video. Yeah. So to leave that in, if it's not relevant to the narrative, yeah. to me is quite voyeuristic. Yeah. Whereas if there's something that's quite uncomfortable and shocking, but it's really important to the narrative mm -hmm. of the story, like I'm not I'm not trying to make everything squeaky clean, but I'm trying yeah. to make it relevant and fair. Well, if that video had something to do with women being in danger. Maybe. And you probably would have asked her after you've spoke to her, yeah. do you mind if I put that in? Yeah. Or should I blow your face? Yeah, there's, there's often a conversation after yeah. we have yeah. our on-camera conversation as well about yeah. whether people are happy for me to use it. And I always say, look, if there's anything in that conversation that yeah. you mentioned that you're not comfortable with going on the internet, yeah. let me know. And um, sometimes I do. Most people, most people that live the street life, fair. They're very candid because they've got to a, unfortunately got to a point in their lives where they don't really feel the need to hold anything back anymore. Yeah. Why would you? Yeah. Um, mm. If you've hit that sort of rock bottom area, mm -hmm. then why would, you know, there's very, there's very little to hide. It's like a game for you when you're making this content. Speaking of games, check out this game I've been playing over winter. It's available on mobile, computer, and you can switch seamlessly between devices. Class graphics, brutal boss battles, proper tactical gameplay, and loads of champions to choose from. There are over 800 champions in the game, ranging from lizard-like creatures to elves, orcs, dwarves, and demons. My favorite player is George the Breaker. Winter is truly here, and Raid has no shortage of icy cold champions to make your perfect snowbound squad. George the Breaker looks absolutely ruthless and is easily one of the hardest hitting champions in the game. Sir Nicholas looks like Father Christmas. His aura skill increases an ally's HP by 33% to help with survivability. This month, get involved in Raid's Christmas Story, a special holiday themed event where you can follow Sir Nicholas through a festive story. It comes with mini games to solve and the chance to win both in-game and real life prizes, ranging from epic and legendary champions to even Amazon 
Amazon gift cards. All you need to do to join the event is to head to RaidXmas.com. That's not all. Raid has just released the The Cursed City. It's one of Raid's biggest features since the Doom Tower. 100 stages to complete, including stages where you'll need to take down two of Raid's bosses at the same time. With all of this exciting stuff and more coming to Raid, if you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? Click my link in the description or scan my QR code on the screen to get insane bonuses available only via my link. We're talking silver, XP brews, and chicken. Once you're in and you're crushing your enemies, come find me under the name Mulvey the Great. Join my clan, not bothered. I'm a legend at this game and we can be legends together. Click my link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. How far do you push it? Because you could have turned that whole video about that woman and the event that happened to yeah. her. Put, kind of make it obvious in the thumbnail. Yeah, I would have got more views, but it's... The, the, the thing is, the motivation for me making these videos yeah. comes from a sociological perspective. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested in what's happening to British society right. over the last 10 or 20 years, linked into things that happened in mm -hmm. the Industrial Revolution and so on, um, and, and then the fallout of post-industrial towns and cities. Yeah, right. um, so, like, shocking personal stories mm -hmm. aren't my um, yeah. initial um, target. It's more a story about a place, mm -hmm. and then we meet and um, discover the characters that are in that town or city. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So it's not just go and find the most shocking things you can? No. <clears throat> so it's more about the, the place and the, what's happened to that place? Yeah. Um, obviously, like, I, I'm recommended or I research and I find stories of places that I think have an interesting story. Um, I'm not always looking for places that are, you know, like mm -hmm. falling apart and in absolute deprivation. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I find the current stage that the United Kingdom's in, right. being 40 years old and have seen it change over my life, I find the state of some of the places that aren't London, <laughs> yeah. I find them, it's interesting and it's shocking. Um, mm -hmm. But often, like with the Grimsby video, like oh, yeah. um, some people that are trying to stick up for Grimsby have said that I searched out for bad parts of the town. I challenge anyone to get off the bus in the centre of town. Um, the bus probably will take you down Freeman Street if it took you on the route it took me. Mm -hmm. And it's right there. And the first people I spoke to are the three chaps that were oh, right. literally sitting on the steps. They were the first people as I got off the bus. Right. Yeah. So they were, because the BBC contacted you about this video. Yeah. And we were like talking whether you should do the interview or not, and then yeah. you decided to let them use the content. Yeah. Um, but it turned out all right. You yeah. Like um, I was a little bit concerned that they, because because the synthesis for that video was some business owners in Grimsby, right, contacting a contacting the BBC mm -hmm. because they thought my video was unfairly showing. Grimsby in a negative light. Um, so I, I got the impression from the interaction with the BBC yeah. that they may lean towards me being unfair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't, I didn't think there was anything else for me to say. Like, everything that's in that video yeah. is my... It's, it's a chronicle of my two days in Grimsby and Cleethorpes. Yeah. There's nothing more I can really say, so I did turn down having an interview yeah. with them. If people want to know my opinion, they can watch the video. I don't feel the need to defend it. Mm -hmm. It's my account of my time. Yeah, yeah, that's what you said to me. Yeah. I haven't really got anything else to say. I'm just going to be arguing that, well, it was there. I didn't fabricate it. Yeah. It, it exists. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, so mine's, my view's a bit different on um, how the world's changed or the UK's changed because yes. where I'm from, it used to be the opposite. If you go to Liverpool, now you'll struggle to find empty shops. Yeah. Same in Manchester. Yeah. They're doing much better. The, the city centre of Liverpool is a hundred times better than it was when I was a kid, so what, 20, 30 years ago. I've got an interesting question for you, though, on, on, that, mm -hmm. um, on that thought. Like, better for who? Uh, people who live there and tourists. Yeah. But definitely tourists. Do you, I mean, I, I haven't been to Liverpool for oh, quite right. a few years. Um, 
and obviously there's been like gentrification. I've, I've been to Manchester more recently, right, so I'll yeah, take yeah. that example a bit more. Um, and of course, like people that have money, mm -hmm. um, it's getting better for them. Oh, yeah, but yeah. what I find with that gentrification is that the poorer people who are on, on the like um, more struggling side of society, they get pushed out of their traditional areas because of this gentrification sometimes. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that the way Liverpool's built it's weird, it's just got the centre and then obviously the areas around it. Yeah. I'm only really talking about the main, where you would go as a tourist. Yeah. And shopping. Um, that's not where the poorer people lived anyway. Yeah. Slightly outside because you've got like Toxteth and Bootle just there. Yeah. Um, but it's still not bad. It's uh, definitely much better than it was when, when we were kids. Yeah. Um, same with Manchester. But it, Manchester's getting so expensive. Like, if you want to buy a flat anywhere near the centre, you've got no chance. Um, I don't know who owns them, but they must be so expensive. Yeah. Uh, but it's nice. Like, maybe that's where the money went in the north. Um, but I went to Birmingham recently, and it was decent as well. Birmingham city centre city has had a lot of money thrown at right, it. Right. Uh, um, it's got, you know, it's got tower blocks now, shiny, right. modern, skyline, loads of shopping. But it doesn't take long to get out to the inner city suburbs mm. and there's a lot of poverty um, right. a lot of organized crime i'm and, yeah, not surprised yeah. yeah and yeah there are areas that are very different very quickly mm -hmm. yeah but and that's that's my point i mean liverpool's not a great example for me to comment on because i haven't been there for so yeah, long yeah, yeah. but manchester i was there recently and i kind of saw the same like the city center yeah, yeah. is banging yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, it doesn't take a lot to see poverty very quickly yeah, 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 and that's that's what interests me, is the is the contrasts in these. Yeah. The cities are different to the towns. Like Grimsby is a completely different phenomena to yeah. somewhere like Birmingham or Manchester. True, yeah. Because of the size of the populace. So, like, you went to uh, Stoke Hanley. Yeah. That was awful the last time I went, which was fifteen years ago. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it's got no better. Yeah. But um, like Birmingham, it's not far away. It's yeah. decent in the middle. Um, and obviously I've got no reason to go into where people live so yeah. I wouldn't ever see it yeah I mean like the, again um, like that visit to Stoke you get the train to Stoke now, now the train station in Stoke is in the like the, um, Stoke's made up of five towns mm -hmm. um, don't ask me to name them all but there's like <laughs> Hanley Newcastle um, I think Stoke's another one Burslem mm -hmm. and I forget the fifth one the train station's in Stoke, so one would assume that Stoke is the centre of right. Stoke. Yeah, yeah. So you get out and it's not, it's Hanley. Yeah. So, you, so you do what I do, you walk from the train station to Hanley. Mm -hmm. And that, that is what meets you when you go to Hanley. There may be nice areas in Newcastle, yeah. but most people that would just get the train to Stoke, to explore Stoke, they would go in exactly the same places I went to. Yeah. And that's what yeah. greets you. It's true. Well, yeah. I'd just rather just play it. Yeah. Um, I like podcasts that are as uncut as possible. Yeah, same. I like content that's as uncut as possible, to be honest, because mm -hmm. <clears throat> to me it shows that they're not taking anything out and yeah. hiding anything. Yeah. Unfortunately, I kind of, yeah. I have to take certain things out because of like the sensitive nature of the conversations mm -hmm. I have with people. Yeah. But, yeah. And I noticed you, um, you linked them together with some B-roll, basically now. I yeah. Know, you said you were uh, learning that from someone. Yeah. That help link it together. I think that, I mean, the B-roll is purely catering to the attention span of the it's average true. viewer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not being disparaging, but we're now in the era of shorts and TikTok, yeah. and that's not really where my focus of, of content creation is. But sometimes you will lose a percentage of your viewers yeah. if you have two or three minutes mm -hmm. of unbroken human dialogue. Yeah. Um, so a little bit of B-roll every 30 seconds or when a conversation changes direction yeah. a little bit, it keeps, it keeps the brain mm -hmm. in that short um, yeah. It's getting worse. Space. Yeah. Um, I've noticed it with TikTok. Um, since TikTok grew massive over, what, the last five years, people are staying over there. They do not move from TikTok. Because people say to me, I'm massive on TikTok. I'm going to now move to YouTube. And I was like, you're going to struggle. Yeah. That's not the same audience. Yeah. Um, well, apparently, I do well on TikTok. 
Yeah, with somebody else's account. So, somebody else is, is <laughs> making a couple of quid out of my content. Uh, he'll be, we'll, get, we'll take him. <laughs> he'll be gone soon. Don't worry about him. <laughs> it's a threat. Yeah, no, he will. He'll, he'll just be gone. Uh, TikTok's actually pretty good with that. So anyone who's got content being stolen, you can just copyright report it and it goes. Yeah. Uh, as long as you can prove you own it, which you do. Yeah. Uh, people can't steal other people's content uh, anywhere. You own it. Yeah. You legally own it. Um, there's people going viral at the minute to, by saying, I take this content, let's say Logan Paul's podcast, and then I record uh, some game Fortnite, put them together, and then post it, and that's original. It's and not that original. becomes your content yeah. because you put something original yeah. next to something. But I'll tell you now, if Logan Paul's team find that, it's gone. Yeah. And your account will be deleted and banned. Yeah. Just make your own content. It's not difficult. Just go and do something. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just go do something. Just go for a walk and have a chat and yeah. take it from there. That's more interesting than copying someone else's content yeah. anyway. Yeah, um, I've got, um, I noticed a few um, people that do like reaction mm -hmm. um, commentaries of, of mm -hmm. my videos. Of yours? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I actually, uh, I got kind of into it cause, right. because, you, you know, you make these videos on your own, you're yeah. completely... It, it's quite a, uh, I've said to you before, I find it quite a lonely existence. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm only away for like, two, three, four days at a time, sometimes yeah. a week. Um, so I can imagine that people that do like travel vlogging yeah. internationally, it yeah. can become incredibly lonely. But um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, so I, I don't often see someone's physical reactions to the videos I've made. Mm. So seeing these people sit in the corner of the screen, yeah. with my, like, yeah. like I, I don't think I'd ever really have a problem with that. If just, as long as they're doing something on it, they're not just sitting in the corner. Yeah. So you probably haven't heard of this guy. He's a Canadian guy called XQC. No. He's a skinny blonde guy. He streams all day, and he, he was doing it to everyone. He puts his face in the corner. He's blatantly not watching the video. And just every now and again, he's like, whoa. And then he uploads that on YouTube. Yeah. All the viewers of that video will not go watch your video. Yeah. So you've lost potential viewers. Yeah, there's a, there's a point to that, yeah. is that like, they're never going to need to go and watch mine again because I've seen it all yeah. on and his channel, yeah. All he has to do is actually react to it and there's no issue. Yeah. Um, there's, another, there's a girl who does the same, uh, I can't remember her name, very, very big YouTuber, Sniper Wolf, I think that's the name. Yeah. Um, but YouTube do nothing about it. At the moment, I don't have a problem with it, but if, yeah. if somebody that's common commentary yeah. videoed my content. If I put a copyright strike on that, yeah. they'd probably take it down. Yeah. Because it flags up. The only reason yeah. I know they're there yeah, yeah, yeah. is they flag up yeah. as matching videos. Well, you, you watch that and go, yeah, that makes sense. He's watched my video. He's given his opinion. Well, the one guy that does it, I can't remember the name of his yeah. channel. Um, he actually seems like quite engaged with the content. Yeah. So I, I, I appreciate cool. that. Like, that's, what it's, that's what it's there for. Yeah. Uh, but just putting your face in the corner to make money out of your video. Yeah. So if I just click play on your video and sit there for 40 minutes yeah. and then upload yeah, it, that's not okay. I'm just stealing your content. Yeah. Yeah. That's what XQZ does. He doesn't react to it. Yeah. And he's that big. He makes millions of these videos. I can't begin to think how boring that could be. He, why do people watch it? Yeah. Um, but right. I've actually read comments that say, I wouldn't watch this content if XQC wasn't in the corner. Okay. Isn't that weird? So he's obviously that entertaining yeah. and engaging. But <laughs> yeah. He makes a Kirk Has yeah. video. Um, Infinitely more entertaining. Exactly. <laughs> um, Kurt's called him out for it. He yeah. ignored it. Uh, but the problem I have with it, and everyone has with it, if your channel gets taken down for three strikes, that's your channel over. Yeah. Not if you're XQC. Your channel gets put straight back on. Yeah. Well, that, that breaks YouTube's rules. So he's obviously got somebody at YouTube saying, um, you can't take my channel down. I'm, I'm too big. Yeah. Uh, and this guy got bought by Kick for $100 million. So this guy's a multi-millionaire, he should pay someone off. Yeah. Shouldn't be allowed. Actually do some commentary. I've got a mate, uh, uh, he was on the podcast, Arthur. Mm. Um, he does commentary yeah. on TV shows. Yeah, of course it's he does, good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. He adds something to it. I don't watch 90 Day Fiance. I find it a bit weird. 
But yeah. when he jokes about it, it's funny. I don't know what 90 Day Fiancé is, but it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> sound like something I'd watch. <laughs> yeah, some, getting foreign brides over and having 90 days to marry them in the US. I've, I've watched a couple of his videos, and I, mm -hmm. from my mind, like he doesn't just play the whole episode. Yeah. He picks certain yeah. entertaining bits out, yeah. comments on them. Yeah. Sometimes he like pulls away from that yeah. to focus on him and his exactly. opinion, and then that's all I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, he fully explained to me, because he's got a, a, a degree in uh, copyright law, so he knows exactly what to do. Um, <laughs> And he said something like, at least 50% of it is his face. Mm. Um, and the rest of it is him talking about it, maybe over the top or whatever. Yeah. It act fully changes the video. It's transformative. But putting your face in the corner is not transformative. No. Even PewDiePie does um, commentary videos. But he, the point of the video is PewDiePie, not the content. Yeah. So, don't steal people's content. That's No. That's the... Uh, the thing. Take a look at yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but if you were making so much money off it, why would you why would you put effort in? That's the problem. He this this guy and other people can steal content, make money by just clicking record. It depends it depends where your um interests lie mm. as a creator. Like I, I I would never it wouldn't matter how much money someone paid me, honestly. Yeah. Like I would never want to do something that I didn't yeah. think was authentic, creative yeah. and mine. And yeah. and like I, I think I think that people can go out and do what I do, mm -hmm. but I know they can't do it in my way. Yeah, um, they could probably take elements of it and reproduce yeah. it. I think if I think as a creator, if if you create with, in, with that genuine fire in your belly, mm -hmm. authentic fire in your belly, yeah. it's harder for people to rip you off. Or well, they will try. They'll try, but they won't succeed. People always want a piece of a pie if they see anything doing well. Well, that happens with everything. It happened with uh, vlogging, proper vlogging. That was just like, today, guys, I'm going to do this. So many people were like, I can copy, uh, I don't know who used to do it 15 years ago. Casey Neistat, surely. Yeah, Casey yeah. Neistat, yeah. They even tried to copy his style by putting the camera down and running up to yeah. it. It yeah. didn't work, He's not, you're not the same person. You're not him, no, you don't no. have his energy. <laughs> nobody, ha I mean, I've never met that man, yeah. but nobody has his energy. Yeah. Um, and anybody that follows, uses his techniques, yeah. follows his style by going to look like a copycat. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Be yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, take, uh, a, like, take things, but you've still got, like if I did his content, you'd be like, that's so weird. You, it, yeah. I've got the opposite personality to him. Yeah. Um, I certainly wouldn't run to a camera. No. <laughs> so, um, I'd probably fall over, trip over if I ran to a camera. Um, people started to copy it and then that genre died. So people don't understand by saturating it, the, the genre dies. It'll yeah. happen, with, uh, happen with travel vlogging. That many people are now able to do it. That's why I stopped. There's, um, there's an argument that it already has happened to probably, travel vlogging. Yeah. You yeah. Know, like I, I, um, my initial motivation for picking up a camera was to to film my travels yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. my passion in life yeah. and like making videos in Poland yeah. and Thailand mm -hmm. like has been done so much now exactly. that yeah it, it didn't work for me mm -hmm. yeah it was oversaturated two yeah. or three years ago really yeah. Um, yeah you've got to have if you're going to do things in the travel niche for example yeah you've really got to have your own take on it yeah exactly you can't just copy the big guy how many people went Soviet, went bald, yeah. grew. Yeah, yeah. The amount of people shouting the word Soviet at things. And, and the, thing, the thing with the, I mean, first of all, like with the Soviet content, yeah. to my knowledge, Bald was first out of the traps. Probably, yeah. Um, and he's got such an obvious enthusiasm exactly. for that part of the world yeah. that the, the intentions are like, you know, they're so uniquely mm -hmm. motivated. Education. Of yeah. Yeah. Of that, we learnt stuff watching it. I knew very little about the post-Soviet world yeah. until I started watching those vlogs three or four years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, it happens with um, Harold. He, his, there, there wasn't really a point. He just why does why, just whenever funny. anyone says Harold, why yeah. does everybody immediately start giggling? Because he's like, it's, <laughs> it's him is his personality. Absolutely, uh, yeah. he's, he's just a funny guy. Yeah. Um, people tried to copy him. Yeah. Um, and you can't fake a non-stop comedian. No. Even one who's like deadpan like him. Yeah. You can't fake it. Yeah. Um, especially for hour long videos. That's why yeah. he did well. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kurt, he's, 
he, nothing scares him yeah. apart from fish. <laughs> uh, so people try to do what he does, and they're gonna get they're gonna end yeah. up being hurt. Yeah. Um, it's either gonna look weak, yeah. or they're gonna get abducted. Exactly. Or, yeah. or robbed, or worse. Yes. Yeah. They see them with big views and try to copy them. Yeah. And it's a it's a bad idea. Just think of what you enjoy. Yeah. Um, I've spoken about this on an episode with Kurt. Um, I started travel vlogging because I was traveling constantly and yeah. I just thought, I wonder if people want to watch it. They didn't. I and think, so, so. like, how, how long ago did you start travel vlogging? Uh, like, first like time you uploaded travel? 20, uh, like, December 2018. Okay. Uh, if you'd done that five years before, yeah. it, it would have taken exactly, off. Yeah. But by then, there were already several people. They were, if you go back, I've, I've deleted most of them. They are awful. It was like... I look at them and go, why did I make that? Who cares? Nothing happened. I was just like, I'm here in Denmark. Or have, you, have you still got your first vlog on you? No, it was so embarrassing. My first vlog is still on my channel. Is it? Yeah, my first, what I would call the first, like, one that shows, still shows what I do now. Right, right. Yeah, right. it's got, like, I don't know, like, 5,000 views or something. Yeah. But I love how um, cringy it is. Uh, like, I think it should stay there to show where things have come from. I've got my second one on there. But that first one, I, th I took a big cannon with me. Yeah. Me and my mate went to Porto. Um, we did very few tourist things, then got absolutely hammered with some yeah. Germ German tourists. And I, I videoed it and it was just so embarrassing. Never drink and yeah. vlog. It was awful. Never drink and vlog. It does yeah. not work. Yeah. And I had music between like parts and it was just so stupid. It was like, because I had no idea how to edit. Uh, but my point was, I was making these videos for ages. I even did them daily when me and Tanya left uh, the UK in 2020. Yeah. I was doing them daily for six months, but nothing was happening. I had to go out to make content and nothing happened. And then Kurt said to me, we were hung over in, in Peru. He went, no one's watching your videos. It's because you're not doing anything. Go and do what I'm doing and see if you get views. And yeah. straight away the views just shut off. Yeah. It's because I had a reason to make it. Here's the most dangerous market in Peru. Yeah. Uh, then I went to Nepal and was like, here's some scammers in Nepal. Yeah. There has to be yeah. a mission to the yeah. video. There has to be like a purpose um, for, for filming that video. Yeah. Or you have to be the most engaging, unique mm. character or personality. Yeah. Harold Balder will come back yeah, to him. Exactly. Um, completely unique individual, yeah. quite humorous a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I could never pull off an hour of almost unedited yeah. content about nothing. Mm -hmm. That man can. Exactly. Yeah. So I need I need a mission. I need a narrative. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I haven't made a video apart from one in Ukraine because it, it made sense to make that since yeah. I was in Cambodia, I think. No, maybe India. I can't remember. It was ages ago. It was like over over a year ago. And I was like, there was. I don't care if people watch it because I'm still going to travel with. It. I've mm. travelled to like I would say like fifty countries mm. since I last made a video. Mm. Um, but people are asking me because I still post on Instagram where are the videos I'm like there's nothing to, to make so do you, here's a question then <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you I mean you haven't put any videos on the Mulvey channel yeah. for a bit but like you did for a long time do you find that vlogging your travels mm -hmm. like um, it affects the experience oh, like negative, yeah. yeah because one of, yeah. like for example I do a lot of my travelling in this country now yeah. and I don't take my other half with me yeah. to make these videos because I've got to be in the zone yeah. and I don't want to like ruin another holiday because exactly. believe me I have ruined some holidays <laughs> with that little action camera yeah um, it was definitely ruining stuff because I didn't enjoy being in Nepal I was sick the whole time um, I only went out to film yeah. and my, my view on Nepal is scammers yeah. and dirt yeah. but Loads of people like, well, it's a dead nice country outside of Kathmandu. And I was like, yeah, but there was nothing for me to film out there. So, and unless you're, um, is his name Nims, the Fourteen Peaks dude? Don't know. He did, like, he, yeah, he's quite a famous um, mountaineer in Nepal. Right. But in my mind, unless you're doing shit like that, exactly, there's no point vlogging Everest. Yeah. Like, so sh showing the like social interactions in Kathmandu, yeah. you can probably it, find I mean, more unique content. I yeah. got more views in them videos than subscribers, which yeah. is something... Uh, I've watched the Scammer one. Yeah, it's quite. a good video. I like that yeah. video. It's one there's, of the only ones I like. There's, there's a, there's a yeah. mission and reason yeah. to kind of expose these scammers, yeah. to play them at their own game. Mm -hmm. They're annoying, so you're kind of annoying them. Exactly. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That was, um, so speaking of something that you're good at, 
I, you can't intimidate me like they were trying to. It just goes straight through me, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. But I can also take the piss out of them to their face. Yeah. So if I was going to continue to do that content, that's what I would do. Yeah. But that's when you get in danger. So yeah, um, like there's there's going to be you know if you do it a hundred times, a hundred and first time. Stab you. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did it in Paris. I got uh, I've got a short on my channel. Yeah. Um, and it was accidental. I just approached some uh, scammers by the Eiffel Tower. Um, your standard European scammers who appear on every public space. Um, I started filming them, started arguing with the guy, and then I spotted his family walking behind me, and I was like, time to go, yeah. quickly. Just left quickly. You have so, to have 360 degree vision. Well, there's something obviously you have as well. I made sure I entered where there was a, a wall on my right hand side, and I faced that way, yeah. and the exit was there. Yeah. As soon as they started to block the exit, I was gone. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you, like, um, like my current camera's no good in the dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, 99% of my content's shot yeah. in the day for that reason. Yeah. Um, I'm not scared to go out at night. I am normally in bed by about nine or 10 because yeah, yeah. I'm old now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I don't often feel in danger. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I'm not, I, like I, I choose my moments and my interactions yeah. carefully. Yeah. Um, I want good content and I want people to meet interesting characters when they watch mm -hmm. the videos. But at the same time, like, I think I've got a good um, feel mm -hmm. for the line, you know? Yeah. But obviously, like, now and again, it can be a little bit hairy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you would get that, if you wanted to go to Latin America, you'd get that constantly. Yeah. During the day. But the difference is, people don't understand this. Uh, Bald's six foot four, maybe. Yeah. Harold's six two, six three. Kurt's six one. Yeah. Uh, they're all, all big. I'm taller than everyone down there and, and in Asia. So I, it's, it's rare you feel danger because you, you're intimidating to them. Yeah. So you'd have the exact same thing if you went there. Because um, people always comment, how are you not in danger on everyone's videos? Yeah. How do you, well, it's a bit different when the people are this when the people are down here. Yeah. Um, there would have to be a lot of them. And how often do you get put in a situation where there's six people? who are all ready to fight you, it's so rare. Yeah, you've, you've kind of got to be foolish to yeah. engage that crowd yeah, as well, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, if, if I see six aggressive looking, hammered, big yeah. guys, yeah. I'm, and I get a vibe that that's, that's an aggressive mm -hmm. vibe, I'm probably not going to go into that situation. But then I think I've, I've approached groups of mm -hmm. drunk people yeah. um, because they look like they're having a good time yeah. and they look like they're going to be engaging. And, yeah, you've got to choose your moments, really. Yeah. Exactly. You don't just aimlessly go looking for danger. No. Um, I'm definitely not looking for danger. I'm, I'm looking for a story. Yeah. I'm looking to... I mean, I, I try and find characters that yeah. are yeah. human, I try and find characters that are humorous. Yeah. I try and find yeah. characters that are sometimes like motivational and empowering. Mm -hmm. um, I think I found a couple of those recently. Yeah. Um, and just a broad spread, really. Yeah. But pe people sometimes say like, why, why do why do I often speak? I did mention to you before. This yeah. is probably the one question that gets thrown at me a bit. Is yeah. people say why why do I often tend to speak to people that are like down on their luck, down yeah, and out, yeah, yeah. from homeless to living in, you know, not, not the nicest neighbourhoods. The sim simple answer to that is, like, I, I try and engage everybody I encounter, mm -hmm. but the more, like, middle class and, um, like, they tend to be more reserved, so mm -hmm. they decline the chance to talk right. to me. Whereas, like, when I bump into people who are, like, having a pint outside a pub or sitting in a doorway or <laughs> just wandering the streets, um, they're often a lot more interested to talk to me. Mm -hmm. So they tend to be the characters, but... Yeah. And how feature. often are you going to get a middle-class person sat in a doorway in, yeah. in Stoke? They're normally in their SUV. Yeah. yeah. And how interesting is their story? You know, like, talking to somebody that is middle class yeah. with a comfortable income, two kids, a Labrador and an SUV mm -hmm. and a mortgage, or somebody that's lived a life mm -hmm. full of stories. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm more interested in giving a voice mm -hmm. to those people that often don't get a voice. Yeah. That's a big motivation for me. The middle class people don't need your help anyway. No. 
That yeah. was my point. That was that yeah. was my point about the Grimsby video. Yeah. Was um, why why are you not giving a voice to these business owners? I think those business owners are probably more than capable of getting their voice heard. Well, they did. They contacted some, the BBC. Some employed or unemployed, sorry, yeah. or homeless dude just sitting on a step. Mm -hmm. Wondering whether he's is wondering where he's going to get his next can from. Yeah, but yeah. no one's listening to. No, no. Well, that's exactly right. So, you give them a platform to talk on, and over a million people have seen it. Yeah. The Grimsby business owners went to the BBC and they listened. Them two lads could never get a response from the BBC. No, never. So you no. did it. And the, and the the other thing that I try and the reason I try and give these people a voice is this, um, this kind of sentiment that because these people are addicts or yeah. alcoholics or unemployed or homeless that they don't deserve a voice right. because their life has fell into the fringes of society to me regardless of how good or bad a person you are or how successful or unsuccessful mm -hmm. you are a human being and you have a story mm -hmm. and if we can't start from that basis then these divisions will only grow yeah. Um, so on the news recently, I can't remember her name, uh, someone in the government has said that living in a tent is a choice. Suella Brown. Is it her? Yeah. yeah. Who's now had to fall on her sword, I think. Has she? Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't think whatever side of offence you sit on politically, I think when you make a statement like that, yeah. there will be fallout on you. Yeah. Yeah. So question, do you think being homeless can be a choice, can be a choice? I think... Given the right, the right, we could go, we could go yeah. on forever about this. Given the fairest of opportunities, yeah. I've seen on a weekly basis how homeless people live. Yeah. Nobody would choose that if they had come from a perfect family, yeah. have equal economic and educational opportunities, and everything goes fairly and swimmingly in their mm. lives. But often, people that fall into the traps of homelessness come from uh, abusive or homeless backgrounds themselves, mm. uh, backgrounds of addiction mm -hmm. um, in, from their parents. They don't have a fair entry point into life. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, I don't think anybody would ever choose yeah. in, in an ideal world to live on the streets. Yeah. I certainly meet a lot of people that I think are institutionalized by their life on the streets mm -hmm. and probably do now actively choose to stay within that um, fringe of society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it kind of involves like quite a different layer of answers, that question. Yeah, exactly. In an ideal world, no, I don't think anyone would ever choose it. It's yeah. not a lifestyle choice. But many people, because they're institutionalised by their environment, yeah. often may choose to stay in those circles. Yeah, yeah. and it would be harder to help them. Um, because I've yeah. thought about this years ago. The amount of people I would have to piss off majorly to become homeless is is crazy. Yeah. But I come from a, a decent family. Yeah. Loads of friends all around the world now. Yeah. Um, I would have to piss off hundreds of people to yeah. to, to spend the night outside, and I'd have to spend all my money. Yeah. Uh, but all you, you, you but you yeah. you've got because of your background that you've just told yeah. me about, yeah. you've got a sense of self worth. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. you believe that you deserve yeah. a good life. Yeah. Um, if you've never had a sense of self-worth because no one's ever told you mm -hmm. or acted in a way yeah. to make you think that you deserve mm -hmm. the best for yourself, yep. then you're almost not even capable of searching for the best for yourself. Yeah, possibly, yeah. 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 Um, I just... Because I, 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 I don't take drugs, don't drink, never smoke, nothing. I don't know what I would have to do to even, to because yeah, most people get come from what you've just said, but the odd person does come from yeah. some, that's some a good, good life. That's a good point to make. How, yeah. what have they done to end up there? That's my question. Like, yeah. what would I have to do to end up there? It'd have to be crazy. Yeah, like, like using you as an example, yeah. since we are, like, there are plenty of solid building blocks and foundations in place. Yeah. You could remove a couple, yeah. like, you could get on the booze, yeah, you, exactly. could, you could develop a gambling or drug habit, mm. um, might remove a couple of the foundations, a few things might fall away, but the, the, the building blocks are, yeah. are pretty solid. Um, 
Yes, some people, some people do incredibly well for themselves, come from great yeah. families, um, develop a really nasty habit. It must be. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, a lot of posh people go straight to cocaine anyway. Yeah. Especially down, down south. Yeah. Because they can afford it. Yeah. Um, and then addiction takes over. Yeah. But then they have to go through all that of pissing everybody they know of. Yeah. Which it would be dead easy if you were addicted to gambling and drugs. Gambling so, and drugs can, so I mean, you, you know, you can ruin your family's yeah. life yeah. Um, with gambling, for sure, mm -hmm. um, very quickly. And you can become annoying as hell yeah. if you've got a massive drug habit <laughs> very yeah. quickly. Yeah. yeah. Don't try it. No, no. that's never been a thing of mine. No. Uh, <laughs> I've had uh, comments on videos where they're saying he's obviously on cocaine because he keeps touching really? his nose. Really? I've got a moustache and it keeps tickling my nose and I'm yeah. just constantly like this. Yeah. I've never taken Now I'm drugs. really paranoid about the fact that I've probably been touching my nose. Yeah, I'm just out here like this. <laughs> uh, I've never smoked, never uh, taken any drugs ever. Uh, I don't drink. I've, I've got drunk uh, many times in my life. But um, a friend said to me recently, I don't know if I told I'm not going to say his name. Yeah. Um, said to me, he's a, he's a big YouTuber. Uh, not cut. <laughs> uh, every stupid mistake I made, I was drunk. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm not drinking anymore because that's exactly the same for me. So I, I about, I don't know, 15, 18 months ago, mm -hmm. I stopped drinking for a year. Right. Um, and now I have the odd beer. Like it's been Christmas, been with my family. Yep. I've had a couple of beers over the last few days. Mm -hmm. um, but my life has got infinitely better yeah. since I, I, I think I pressed a massive reset because since I was a teenager in this country, yeah. um, like alcohol is such a part of every social interaction, you know. Yeah, um, yeah we're sitting in a pub. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I, my, my relationship with it was almost like it was with water. Um, right. I was very high functioning, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I was, my, it wasn't like a sensible evaluation of when I should and shouldn't drink. Right. And having a year off and realising how, like, I was often hungover and I just didn't even acknowledge it. Right. Now I choose my moments when it's right to have a beer or two and how mm. many to have. And life's got infinitely better. Yeah. Like, I've been more productive on YouTube. Yeah. You know, you're growing now, you're a full time YouTuber. Yeah. So. That's the most cringy uh, yeah. job title I can ever think of. 40 year old YouTuber. Yeah. Yeah. Like you just told the guy in yeah. this pub, uh, that's your job now. Really? And if, yeah, what? The next question <laughs> is, how the hell do you make money out of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my answer is, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> if people want to know the answer to that, um, it's pretty simple. Um, when ads pop up between the videos, you get paid a percentage of it. Yeah. And um, when they see you promote a brand, uh, you get paid for that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Nothing else to it. Um, there's loads of other ways you could make money, you're just not doing it yet. No. I'm sure you will at some point. I think that like pe people, be because it's YouTube, people don't realise the views these videos get. Yeah, not yeah, necessarily yeah. mine, they get a few, but people like we would talk about uh, like Bald and Kurt, yeah, and, yeah. you know, those like um, really high yeah. level travel vloggers. Yeah. You know, they're getting like over a million views at least every, every video. video. Yeah. That would be their poorest performing video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's probably more views than the BBC gets for many of, yeah. it, of its yeah. things on iPlayer. So the reach, people don't realise because it's yeah. amateur content, yeah. that the reach is probably superseding 100%. these and traditional... For you, for you, some guy's putting you on TikTok and so people are seeing you on TikTok that yeah. you weren't aware of until yeah. I told you. Um, your reach is even further that way. Yeah. New audience. And then you've got Facebook and you've got Snapchat, you've got Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, there'll be videos of you on Twitter somewhere. Yeah, someone will have taken it and said, "Look at this guy in Grimsby." Yeah. Um, but yeah, your your channel is an anomaly. Um, generally, if you've got a million subscribers, you'd probably expect hundred thousand views a video, ten percent. Yeah. Give or take. Okay. Yours get more than every single video gets more views than you've got subscribers. That's my. That's become my base yeah. goal for every video. Um, is to try and get more views yeah. than the amount of subscribers I've yeah. got. There's only a few people who can do it. Because then that means the channel's growing. Yep. Um, but I've got, feel free to disagree with me, but I think the barometer of subscriber count mm -hmm. as judging the success of, or, or lack of success of a YouTube mm -hmm. channel is a very, um, like, um, 
it's not a very accurate that way. That's wrong. Because um, many channels had some big videos two, three years ago, yep. change the content or the goalposts of interest changed. Yep. And now most of our subscribers are ghost subscribers. Mm -hmm. I think what happens with my channel is that because of the type of content it is, I think a lot of people watch the content but don't click subscribe. Yep. Um, and consequently, I don't have as many subscribers as some other friends that I've got, people yeah. I watch, yeah. that get far less views than me. Yeah. Um, but I think if you get the views, the rest will take care of itself. Well, if it's for money, the subscribers do not matter. No. Uh, views matter, and you are growing regardless, fast. So we're talking like it's nothing, but every few days, it, your yeah. subscribers increases quickly. Uh, but people do use it as a barometer of how successful you are. Yeah. How many subscribers have you got? It's almost like the car on the drive, I look at it. Right. Like, um, it doesn't really tell the story of what's going on in the house, in the fridge. Is there any food in the yeah, fridge? Yeah. But if you see someone, you've said to me before that people take you a lot more seriously when you have 100K yeah, subscribers. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's kind of that watermark of, mm -hmm. they've, they've got some reach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I spoke to someone the other day because of my business. Uh, they contacted me and said, uh, I've got two and a half million subscribers uh, on YouTube and I've got this many on TikTok and Twitter and whatever and I was like yeah how many views do you get on YouTube because yeah. I want to put ads in their videos yeah of course yeah uh, oh, it depends it's gone down a bit recently so I looked and it was like 18,000 I'm like for two and a half million that's mental yeah so I looked back and it was exactly what you said 11 years ago 100 million views yeah the channel has stayed the same the audience has got older so it's still making gaming content for children, but the children are now 30. Yeah, so and then that gaming 20. content is now outdated. Exactly. For this well, no, he's you're using this he's FIFA or whatever it's called now, EAFC. Yeah. Um, and it, well, it was his girlfriend actually messaging me, um, got quite rude about it. I was like, all you needed to say was he had some banger videos 10 years yeah. ago. His audience is older now, but we're, we're working on increasing it. I, like, I would have been like, yeah, cool. Yeah. But it was a, it was. Um, well, he releases every day, so you can't expect him to get um, 250,000 views a video. And I was like, I can. Yeah, it's exactly what I expect. Yeah. Uh, two, if it was like 200,000, I'd be like, all right, need to improve it. Yeah. 18,000, 20,000. I yeah. get more than that on this podcast. Yeah. So you're wrong. Yeah. Um, there's answers for it. They're either fake or they just don't care anymore or the accounts are dead. There's a reason that they don't watch it. Why, why subscribe and then not watch? Like, I watch every channel that I'm subscribed to. Yeah. I know that's rare. Yeah. People click subscribe. But two and a half million and you can't get 100,000 views. Something drunk. Yeah. Um, but they were bragging about their subscriber counts, not the views they get, which well, is the wrong one. I mean, I mean, they would be because that's all they've got to brag exactly, about. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, I would go in with, I used to be massive. I'm working on getting back to it. I know what my plan is. Can you, can, do you want can to get involved? Yeah. yeah. Can, can you help? Yeah. Um, but that's what it is. So this channel, it's got what twenty, twenty four thousand or something. Yeah. Uh, every video gets more than yeah. than the subscribers. Um, I don't know how long that'll last, but we'll see. Um, but the people would be shocked at how much money this channel makes, considering mm. the size of it. Yeah. Um, I think people just don't know. They have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Before I started talking to you, yeah. I wasn't <laughs> aware of the. Yeah. Um, earning capabilities of yeah, the future. Yeah. I was aware of, um, you know, the, is it the RPM? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and just for general, yeah. I wasn't aware of how to monetize things yeah. at a deeper level. How to, how to get rich from it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, my, my strap line for my company. I make YouTubers rich. Yeah. And within a, a month, I told you what, what yeah. earning potentials are, and you were like, okay. Yeah, we'll see. And then straight away you're like, okay, yeah, and it for, works. For, for me, <laughs> since I decided to go full time doing it, yeah. um, which was around the time that I started talking to you, maybe yeah. just before, yeah. um, I very quickly realised that the costs of me making these videos are very high yeah. because of the country I'm making exactly. them in. Cost yeah. of living crisis, rip off yeah. Britain. Yeah. You know, travel and accommodation in yeah. this country is not cheap, no. um, and consequently it has to do relatively well yep. in order for me to make it become sustainable. Yep. Um, I do um, spend a lot of money in many ways making these videos. Yeah. And 
you know, you 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 have to make a living. You know, yeah. you know. You People get annoyed at ads. So at this point, there will have already been an ad in this yeah. video. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you were, you were thinking that when you first did your first one. Yeah. How are people going to take to it? But you made it funny, so I you can make best. it entertaining. Dodgy Dave made it funny. Exactly. Yeah. It was entertaining. Um, you can't do that with every ad. No. Um, your second one, you can't do. You couldn't do that because no, of the topic. I, yeah. Um, that would have been but, rather inappropriate. Your next one should be the funniest one you've done, and people yeah. should be using the ads to entertain um, as well, or the audience will skip it. Yeah. So it shouldn't take away from your video. It should be for you. It should be funny or in line for everyone else it should be it should be entertaining there, there are a, there are a few creators that are so good at doing adverts yeah that i actually look forward to yeah. the advert yeah, more yeah, than yeah. the video my my favorite comedian podca podcaster is tim Diller, an american okay. comedian yeah. i think i mentioned him to you he's, so. he's more of a ranter on his podcast okay. he's in like the joe rogan bro group all right um and his adverts are just such an entertaining rant yeah um, yeah, there, there are some creators that like put, probably put more effort into their ads mm. to make sure that they don't lose the audience from the content. That's a that's a big thing with everyone. I said that to you straight away. Your retention's going to drop as soon as course, this ad yeah. comes on. What can you it's do only to natural. make it not yeah. exactly? But uh, I don't know if you've noticed when you're looking at the stats. So your retention normally goes in a line yeah. downwards. The ad will have a little thing. Does that? Yeah. But if that shows that they're just skipping, they're not leaving, or your retention go like this. Yeah. Which is good for you, but it does show that the, uh, a lot of them skip. The smaller you can make that dip, the better people are entertained. Do you know it's also important that I've just thought of from, like since I've been putting a couple of ads in the videos, is it's really important the content that you place directly after the ad, because okay, yeah, yeah. You're, you're gonna at the very least slightly irritate your viewer yeah, 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 with yeah. an ad yeah, you have yeah. to take that for granted so when the ad finishes after 60 seconds or whatever mm -hmm. you've got to have something really engaging to hold them yeah. as soon as you come back mm -hmm. because they're looking for a reason to click off yeah, um, yeah. I think that's the way to look at viewers in general you know there's so much content on YouTube yeah. that they are looking for a reason to swipe away or look mm. at the next video yeah because there's infinite videos to look at. So yep. if you don't keep hold of them, and especially when you put ads in. I've never understood why it irritates people anyway. Because if I don't like the ad, or I already know about the brand, I just do this and carry on. Yeah. It doesn't annoy me, because there's already five ads in the video from YouTube anyway. Yeah. Somebody else is just getting paid for them. Why not be happy that your creator is getting paid? Yeah, like, you know, like when your mum and dad watch, um, What's on ITV? What's for soap on ITV? Yeah, Curry. Curry, yeah. yeah. That, that'll have ads. Yeah, yeah. yeah it does, yeah. Like, they don't stop watching Curry because there's an ad. They're going to make a brew. They're going to make a brew. They'll put it on... <laughs> my, my, my missus, mum and dad put it on mute. Exactly. And, and like, but they still, they still want to watch Curry. Exactly. Yeah. It's not Curry's fault there's an ad in there. No. They've got, also they've got to pay their actors. actors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, when you... Because you changed your content. Um, I remember years ago watching something you did in Cornwall. Yeah. Um, on a beach somewhere. Yeah. What, how did you decide? Because it wasn't working, and you, you obviously knew that at the time. How did you decide it, was, to it wasn't working to the point I wanted it to yeah, work. Yeah, exactly. Um, it did all right in that tiny limited... It's a tiny limited niche. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a remote, southwesterly, isolated little peninsula of the UK, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is very beautiful, and a lot of people are quite passionate about that area. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Um, but... There's only so far you can go with that content. And you couldn't have gone full-time on YouTube, no. no chance. I, I, I don't know of a full-time Cornish YouTuber. No. And I, know, <laughs> I know a few of them. Um, but I'm just, like the, the grander story of the UK is far more interesting mm -hmm. to me. And, you know, I, I, I just ultimately, I think creatively, so, like, outgrew that, yeah. that niche. Mm -hmm. um, and it just... I'd already made a couple of videos that definitely were in this niche. Okay. So I made a video where I sat down and spoke, spoke to a homeless chap in Truro right. um, that did quite well. Um, I made a video about how the cost of living crisis had affected people in Cornwall's poorest town, Camborne. That, mm. that was my best performing video until recently. Right. Um, and I did another video asking people about how they feel about second homes destroying communities. Mm. And 
now I look back, they were all like the synthesis for what I do now. Okay. But I kind of ran out of stories and content in Cornwall okay. to make that. So we just evolved into uh, driving further. <laughs> yeah, and it is, it, it's a difficult part of the UK to get out of. Like Americans might be watching this thinking, well, the UK's this big. Yeah, but Cornwall's really difficult to get yeah. out of. It takes forever. Yeah, it is like <laughs> Cornwall's a six hour drive from London. Yeah. It's a six, five and a half hour drive from where we are now. Yeah. in Staffordshire yeah. um, and if I want to go to Grimsby or Scotland or Carlisle like you're looking at like eight or ten twelve yeah. hours yeah especially with the bloody traffic and the yeah and the train fees yeah so to get to London for visas it cost me 100 quid each way yeah and same with Tanya so yeah. we're paying 400 quid just to get to London to grab a visa yeah or something yeah when they could be in Manchester, it could take me 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's mental still that you still have to go to London. Like, you know, well, why can't Manchester be that hub in the north too? Yeah. <clears throat> Easy to get to for everyone. Yeah. Even from Scotland, you can get there in two but it's hours. Got, really, in terms of the entire nation, it's, it's central. Yeah. Yeah. I would uh, choose Edinburgh over London to get anything if I had to, like a passport office. Yeah. I'd go to Edinburgh, no problem. Yeah. Straight on the train there. Yeah. I was the same in London, I could go from Liverpool to London in two hours, but it's dead expensive. So yeah. Then you've got to go through all the metros and stuff. Uh, where Edinburgh, you could just walk. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, I try and avoid London yeah. at all costs. Um, I understand that there's content to be made there. So at some point, you know, I passed yeah. through it recently to get to Brighton. Brighton feels very London y in it? its vibe when you're trying to make videos right. on the streets. Um, people are more centrally focused, they're not as open. Right. Um, the best place I've made videos for people being open so far is definitely the like Yorkshire area. Yeah, that was uh, my thought on it. Your, um, people in Yorkshire will want to talk to you. Yeah. So. And, the, and just like the down on the hills coastal towns, right. people are a little bit more relaxed and you know, I guess they don't have vloggers walking through there. Yeah. towns every day so it's quite it's yeah, quite yeah. interesting to them as well in london i guess every fifth person's walking around talking to a selfie stick possibly yeah and it's very busy yeah i've only been to london a few times no and it was recent for visas and to do the podcast with arthur yeah i'd been once but i only passed through i got off at euston ran to a different train station and then left to be on a the chase yeah <laughs> people with what i do people are quite aware of london yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not many people, especially like overseas or even in this country, are truly aware of the story of the people of, of Paynton or the people mm. of Grimsby yeah. or the people of Real. Um, Have you done Real yet? Not yet. It's on the list. Yeah. So that was where I went as a kid. That's where you holidayed. Uh, I think so, because it wasn't. It's not far away. Uh, there was a, you know, um, Waterworld that was in Stoke. Yeah. There was one in Real, yeah. and that's closer. Yeah, so we used to go there. But it, was, it must have been a dump. Yeah. It can't have been nice. But I was—I must have been about eight when we went there. Definitely as long as Waterworld's exist. open when you're eight, you, you don't care yeah, about exactly. all the boarded-up shops on the way in. Yeah. <laughs> I drove past Waterworld recently on the way to Alton Towers. Yeah. And I think it's closed. Oh, you—you you, you love theme parks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alton Towers is class. One yeah. of the best in the world. <laughs> yeah. I went to Florida to did the theme park recently yeah. and then regretted it because it's so expensive. Apparently, um, like I, I went to Orlando a lot as a kid, yeah, I was yeah. quite lucky. Um, apparently, even Orlando, since like post COVID, like international drive mm. is like, there's a lot of boarded up stores, like it's not as vibrant. Uh, there was um, no one there when I went, I yeah. know it was, when was that recently? Uh, like September, international drive was booming when I went seven years ago, 14 years ago, yeah. so. Um, but it wasn't now. It was like, people were just using it as a road. Yeah. Not as a attraction. Yeah. Uh, but it was like, it was after the school holidays, because I never go during school holidays to any, any tourist place. Yeah. It was like September or October or something. So maybe it was different in August. Yeah. I, I think, I think the legacy of COVID is something that can be easily passed over with, with all of the towns I visit. You know, these seaside mm. towns were, were struggling because of um, cheap foreign holidays mm. for a long time. It had taken tourism away from them. And then yeah. the final nail in the coffin was whatever was left, shutting yeah. that down 
on and off for a year or two. Yeah. Uh, Change the world. Something I can give to people about traveling. Because people, I don't know who watches this, I don't know who knows who I am. So I travel full time. Uh, I'm only back to see my mum for Christmas. Um, holidays abroad are cheaper than in the UK. So, and also holidays are cheaper than you think they are. So for, this sounds so cheesy, for, for our anniversary, I think it was two years ago, mine and Tanya's, I said, do you wanna to go to the Maldives? She said, yeah. And it was cheaper to go for a month than to stay where we were in Thailand. So we went to the Maldives for a month. Yeah. Which sounds bizarre. Yeah. It was expensive, but it wasn't like what you'd expect. Yeah. And I bet you people spend more going to Cornwall. I am a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, these these holiday lets, like if I got three bedrooms, mm -hmm. like that could go for like two grand a week. Yeah. So I definitely spent I'd spent less than two grand a week, put it that way. Yeah. In the Maldives. I um I watched your last listened to your last podcast yeah. about how to work and travel yeah, yeah. abroad and how to make that work or how yeah. you make it work yeah. and your your mate yeah. uh, does anyway. And and like that does really get you thinking about like he, he mentioned I think about how he hasn't got his mortgage anymore. Yep. So therefore he hasn't got his council tax and yep. his water rates and his exactly. sky and whatever. And if you factor it all in, yep. um, even even me um, traveling around the UK, mm -hmm. like I've tried to figure out whether like staying in hotels, like if they're not too expensive, is cheaper than um, paying my mortgage. And they're probably not as far away yeah, as it's you think. Not, yeah. So, it's, so if you start thinking about Eastern yeah. Europe, Exactly. Or Asia or South America, yeah. then I'm sure your living costs are lower than mine. Um, easy. I yeah. would say less than half, yeah. um, and I, including flights and hotels and everything. Uh, Thailand, you can stay in a really nice apartment with a gym and a pool for like 500 quid a yeah. month yeah. with rapid Wi-Fi. And Thailand got expensive. The first time I went, mm -hmm. you know, like a completely different country to, to what, it? It, what it was when I went in 2018, like the right. infrastructure. Right. I first went when I was like in my early 20s and very different country to now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it take away the sex tourism, uh, then I like it. Yeah. It just irritates me just seeing loads of old men walking around with tigers. And I get put in a category with that. I, my girlfriend is with me every yeah. day. <laughs> she, yeah. She's not an Asian. <laughs> she's European. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it irritates me people going, oh, he pays for sex. I f no, I don't. Maybe because I took her to Maldives. Yeah. Half of that money was hers, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, that is a stigma of Thailand, that yeah. if I say I'm going to go and stay there for a month, people just assume, because I'm 35 and, and white, that uh, I'm going there for that reason. Go in there, because it's cheap. Yeah. And it's hot, and the yeah. internet's fast. Yeah. Quiet and what fast What more does a man need? That's all I want. Tea, fast Wi-Fi, quiet apartment. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. Should we get another brew? Yeah, I am uh, gasping. So Liverpool's on obviously a seaside town, but yeah. no one, a seaside city. No one thinks of that. Yeah. Um, the whole place just gets battered by storm. Same with Blackpool and Preston. And yeah. Well, the Morecambe. reason I haven't done a video in Blackpool yet is I went up to the northwest yeah. and some storm, we name them now, don't we? Yeah. Some storm, whatever, X name, uh, absolutely battered Blackpool. Like yeah. it, was, it was impossible to go and make an out, outdoors vlog. Yeah. I yeah. certainly don't have the equipment to pull that off. No, but you, yeah, you need to go and make a Blackpool one at some point. Yeah. You might as well do the whole, whole Northwest, I say. Yeah. Because you can even do it in Fleetwood. That'd be a mad place to do a, yeah. as long as Blackpool, but yeah. poorer, I think. Fleet, yeah. Fleetwood's a fishing mm -hmm. port, isn't it? Yeah. You still see Fisherman's Friend everywhere around the world. I still see the, the packets of them. Yeah. And they come from that, Fleetwood. They yeah. come from Fleetwood. Yeah. I like a fisherman's friend. Yeah, they're all right. They're probably some behind the bar, yeah. <laughs> Any good pub should have them. Yeah, they'll be here somewhere. Yeah. But I see them in every country. They're just sat there. This is a fantastic advert for Conor McGregor's step. I might message them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that his? Yeah. All right. I haven't tried it yet. Maybe we'll have one before we go. Oh, you won't. <laughs> is it just like a Guinness? Mm. A Guinness where all the money don't get to Diageo. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Who make enough money. Yeah. So do you, do you consider yourself a non-drinker now, or yeah. do you just yeah. you, like you actively? I don't drink, or you just don't ever want one. Uh, I choose not to. Yeah. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't ever feel like I want one, but like I've never really liked lager. Always thought it's it's pretty horrible. I drank it to get drunk. Yeah. Don't like spirits. Make me feel sick. Yeah. Shots. Hate them. Yeah. Um, 
And then I started drinking IPAs, and for some reason I pretended I liked them, but I didn't. Because you yeah. wanted to be a hipster. Well, everyone was a drinking bonafide them. Bonafide hipster. And, yeah, yeah, and then somebody passed me... you got a beard, so you're supposed to like them. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody passed me a Foyt Smooth. Yeah, and I was like, hey, that's decent, that. Nice, nice. Yeah. creamy, tasteless nothingness. Yeah, yeah. it was all right. Yeah. So I started drinking, like, smooth, and uh, it was all right. Yeah, uh, I love a smooth. I've just um, discovered a local near me, because where I live, I've only lived, only lived there for, like, five or six years. Yeah. So I'm still discovering places. And they've got Caffrey's on draft. Right. Yeah, which I haven't seen for yeah. ten years. In Ireland, I had... don't have it here. They had an Irish... Bitter, smooth, bitter. Kilkenny? No. Or, uh, it was in... Smithix. 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 Smithix, yeah. Yeah, Smithix, Smithix yeah, yeah. one of them, yeah. yeah. And it was decent, because they had red, they had standard lager, and they had smooth. Yeah. Or whatever it was, and it was decent. So if you ever did have a beer again, it would be yeah. smooth. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Like, it was me only... If I come to a pub that's open, yeah. and I decide I want a beer, it'll be one. Yeah. If they've got Thwaites. You, might, you might have a forged Irish stout. Yeah. 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 But I don't... If I don't, Connor gets his wallet out. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't crave it, don't, don't want no. it. Uh, Life goes much smoother. With tea. With tea, yeah. <laughs> You'll always see me with the tea. Yeah. Um, people are shocked at how much I drink. I'm talking how many? 30 plus a day. 30 teas a day? E easy, might even be 50. That must have some minor health. Possibly. Um, negatives? It's just water. Yeah. Uh, I don't Stained push, water. No sugar, yeah. nothing. Just a bit of milk. I usually use... Uh, Lactose free and skinned, yeah, for health. Benefit. So you must struggle like when you go to, like, I don't know, chili. I carry it with me. Do you? Yeah, I always if I see because it's usually Lipton in a shop. Yeah. At least I've got some Lipton with me, because local um, teas they have them. They're usually dead shit. Yeah. You need three tea bags in there. Yeah. In Mexico was the worst. They really struggle for stuck in a good brew in the states. It's a problem. Yeah, they but have in, what I call English breakfast, but yeah. it's like, it's not what. But you can get in Walmart, you can get Lipton. Can you? Uh, and, and a shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and you can get um, Twinings. Mm. So that'll do. That'll do. Um, that's what I started doing. Uh, just buying the expensive British one instead of buying the local one. So what's, the, your, what's your favourite tea? PG Tips. Really? Mm. They've just changed the bag, though. I don't know if this is such a British thing. To say. They've just changed the bag from a pyramid to, to a flat one. That, that was the what, best part. What are the, uh, the advantages of a pyramid? I don't know. It was just cool. It's just it just all comes out from all sides. People love Yorkshire tea. That's what we're on now. Have you ever tried the Cornish tea? Probably a long time ago. It's like in an orange pack. It's really good. It's called Smuggler's Brew. Right. I'll send you some. Yeah. To, to wherever I am. The Congo. <laughs> um, I'll drink most normal teas, um, but some of them are brought so shit. But then you get to Sri Lanka, and every tea is just strong. Yeah. It's all just where it's from. Freshly picked. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, think of how strong Yorkshire is, yeah. times it by 10. Sri Lanka's a country that interests me to visit. Yeah, outside of Colombo, dead nice. Yeah. Uh, Colombo's a bit of a dumb. Is it Candy? Is that a Candy is a cool yeah. place, yeah. Is that mountainous? Yeah, area. it's yeah. in the middle of the country. Yeah, uh, I stayed in a B and B in Candy for three dollars per night, not each, just me and Tanya. Yeah, uh, I had aircon, I had fast Wi-Fi, and breakfast is included. Yeah, so we paid one fifty each, and the breakfast was probably worth about ten pound. I had to give him more. I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. I'd, I'd be like that. Yeah, I'd, he was yeah. such a nice bloke. I don't know why. A little it was bit cheap. for you. Yeah, could do a lot for him, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just paid them what I thought the normal rate was, which over there is like 15 quid. Yeah. Um, and that's not something I normally do. I don't go around just being a ph philanthropist. Yeah. But he was just dead nice. Yeah. And I kept saying to him, stop bringing all this breakfast. It's, it's too much. We don't need to eat all this. It's only yeah. going to get thrown away. I yeah. eat a yoghurt and that's it for breakfast. Yeah. So I was like, I'll take the toast and the yoghurts. But the fruit basket, you've got to keep that. And yeah. eggs and stuff. It was definitely a loss for us. It couldn't, it couldn't have made him any money. Um, but that was the cheapest hotel I've ever stayed in. Yeah, I chose it on purpose just to see how much it was worth, and it was because it looked good in the pictures. So, do you generally aim for like um, B and Bs and Air Airbnbs? Uh, hotels, really? Yeah, yeah, it used to be Airbnbs, um, but they give you these weird instructions. Don't do this. You need to turn the heating on here. You need to take the bins out. And I was like, I'm on holiday. Yeah, technically, um, I don't want to do any of that. I want to turn up. 
use it and then leave. And I'm very clean in general. I don't leave any mess or... Yeah. But I assume most people do. Yeah. Um, but hotels, they also come and clean every day. Yeah. Uh, and restock everything. Uh, if we're staying for a long time, I choose an apartment. And, yeah. Uh, reviews have to be good. They have to mention how fast the Wi-Fi is because there's nothing more frustrating than not being able to do work. Yeah. Uh, and it has to be quiet and it never is. Yeah. It's never quiet enough. No. This is quiet for me. Yeah. Apart from the fridge. Yeah. It's quiet. It has to be quiet. Uh, and I don't get people shouting in their house. It, it's so common. Um, I think for us growing up in England, they're made of bricks, so it's, it's rare you would hear next door. Yeah. But abroad, they, every country, just ha you can hear people in hotel rooms. And Latin America, they turn music on at 6 a.m. Yeah. It's just crazy. Just like a 6 a.m. party. Yeah, it's, but that's normal, apparently. You yeah. just turn it on, music on. Is that the end of the night, or is that breakfast party? That's breakfast party. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I could never imagine being that enthusiastic about life at 6 in the morning. No. I got up today a bit earlier. Yeah. Just so I could get a brew, and then start yeah. driving. It took me an hour to get here. Yeah. Um, but I just want to drink my tea and get in the car and drive. Yeah. Morning. Yeah. And not have a fiesta. Yeah. But I'm very British. Yeah. As we sit here in a pub drinking tea. <laughs> so what's the, what's the best country you, you've visited in 2023? Because we're almost at New Year's. Oh, 2023. Eight. So I visited 32 countries this year. Yeah. This year alone. Yeah. Uh, best and worst? <sighs> On the spot. Well, Australia is the best. This year? Yeah. Yeah. This year. Um, shocked me how, how cool it was. You can't be living cheaply renting yeah. temporary accommodation there. Oh, no, I, I mean, That's I don't expensive. really live cheap anyway. Yeah. It just sounds, that, that Sri Lanka one was a one-off. Yeah. Um, Sydney, I stayed in Sydney. Yeah. And, and Cairns. Yeah. It's, it's expensive, but I liked it. It was worth the money there. They're, they're good people. That's, yeah. an in, that's an interesting point that can bring me back to, like, talking about Britain as well. Mm. I call Britain a lot, not really in the videos, but in jest with friends and yeah. family, rip off Britain. Yeah. I think it's such an apt... Mm -hmm. um, title for this country yeah. because the cost of living is quite high yeah. but I don't think the quality of life for many people right. is value for the high cost of living okay. Australia I find it a very expensive place to be yeah. but their general standard of life, the amount of property you get for your money, yeah. whether you're renting or buying um, even like how big the roads are mm. like how yeah just how good an experience you have doing everything day to day yeah um, I enjoy being there. yeah I mean it's for, I would say everything's 1.5 times the price here yeah probably. especially in like um, Aldi or Lidl yeah. or whatever their version is yeah. it was one of them um, a bag of frozen veg here is a quid and it was the equivalent of 150 over there yeah that infuriated me yeah. <laughs> it was, it's the same thing yeah um, but it's more comfortable being there apart from the heat but, and spiders and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's decent. Don't worry about spiders. Yeah. They're more worried about you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, um, I expected to enjoy it, but I liked it much more than I thought. Yeah. So that's number one. It's probably up there in the top. There's, there are different faces to Australia. Like, mm -hmm. you know, one of my best mates lives out in Western Australia. And I haven't visited for a few years since COVID, but used yeah. to go a lot. And there are many different faces to us that are yeah. very different to Sydney. Um, yeah, 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 and it's a, a lot of people. They go to Sydney, they go to Melbourne, yeah. and then they say they've seen Australia. Yeah. I just think you've got to get in a car and just drive inland yeah. until it gets more and more red dirt and mm. meet the communities and the people yeah. there because that's that's real Australia. Yeah, Cairns was a bit different. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, there's um, a lot more of the natives that live up there. Yeah, um, totally different than obviously Sydney. Yeah, um, I enjoyed both. Yeah, cool place. Um, I did well. I tried to do the Barrier Reef. Just it was, the sea was rough as anything. Yeah. Everyone was just throwing up. Yeah. Still got in the water and seen some stuff, but it was it was cool. The Ningaloo Reef on the west coast oh. is uh, it's not as epic as yeah. the Barrier Reef, but it's it's not as over touristed either. Right. So if you ever, I would highly recommend WA. It's like okay. a third of the, the entire country. Yeah, it's so yeah, vast. Yeah. There's not as many people there. Yeah. And uh, Tasmania. Yeah. We absolutely wonderful. Yeah. We'll go back soon. Cooler climate, which works for me. Yeah. Um, kind of reminds me a bit of Cornwall, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Similar sort of like laid back, similar beaches and 
Yeah. Uh, worst. Worst, sorry. Worst. I, I digress. <clears throat> um, this year, I haven't been to that many countries I could call bad this year, so... Uh, Colombia. Okay. People love it. I can't stand it. Been th three times, maybe. I get the impression Kurt loves it. Yeah, he, he's been there well, on he an awful lot. Yeah. Loves the loves the women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why all the American men go there. Who can blame him? Um, uh, Colombian girls like American men. American men like Colombian girls. Well then, let them. Yeah, do let the thing. <laughs> See, I'm not going there for parties or yeah. women. So what I'm what am I there for? I was there for for, for work, and I don't like noise. Yeah. Um, so it's not my place. Yeah. Uh, Bogota was decent. Yeah. Um, Medellin is not. I won't be, ever be going back there. I made some good friends there, though. It's uh, it's annoying. I just couldn't ever imagine going back there. And Santa Marta was not not nice at all. Yeah. But Bogota, apart from being cold, was was a nice place. Yeah. It was supposed to be dangerous, but I didn't feel it. I just enjoyed being there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Colombia. Just because I've not really been to any places that I would consider bad. Uh, didn't. I went to the US this year. New York was much better than I expected. Okay. Um, went to Tanya for yeah. for a birthday or something. I can't remember, and uh, it was much better than I expected. Yeah. Much better. No one was hassling me for tips, yeah. and I just went there with the idea of you just click the button on the machine and that that the tip automatically does. So I don't have to start doing maths. You go to different places for different reasons. Yeah. Like like you go to New York because to me it is the city that trumps all other cities. Right. Um. It it it, it is like it's like the alpha archetype of that mm. western city isn't it um central park was decent yeah um the food was good uh, ba new york bagel was quality uh, target's not a bad supermarket <laughs> it was all right yeah have you done uh, much of the states in general though? just uh, florida a couple okay. of times and new york just the east yeah yeah but i know you've been to it a lot quite a lot yeah Fa my favorite part of the states for just for ju for just the culture and the overall experience is the South. Yeah. Um, Mississippi, Georgia, um, Tennessee. I can imagine the food down there is class. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, you, don't, you don't struggle to get yeah. good, reasonably priced food. That's a massive bonus of the US. You're not going to be stuck on a tiny plate of food. No. It's always going to be massive. Yeah. You're always going to have like, lunch as well as breakfast yeah. or whatever. Yeah. A lot of people, that, a lot of Brits that go to the States, They've said to me, I can't believe how big the food is. Yeah. Like, how am I supposed to eat all that? I got really fat when I went on holiday to Florida. But I don't think they realise that they, they give you more and they kind of expect you to leave half of right. it and get it in a takeaway box. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't think that. It's a to-go <laughs> culture. Yeah. Um, something I figured out about myself in America is uh, there are a few words I say British. Yeah. Americano. Okay. Like, can I have an Americano? They're like, Americano. I'm like, how do they say Americano. Okay. Yeah. But it's a word I say, I just speak normal, oh, my, yeah. my accent. Yeah. Um, and then say one word, <laughs> like can't. Yeah. Um, they would say, what, can't. Yeah. So I would say, um, I can't go down there and be like, can't. Like, oh, okay. Then, it kind of sounds like they're right because there's no R in can't. Mm -hmm. But we but we put it in. Yeah. Yeah. Americano. Yeah. Are you a red or a blue? Red. Um, my, my family's blue. Really? Yeah. Not my immediate family. Like my mum's brothers, all blue. My granddad, blue. So who who was the turncoat? My dad. Yeah. I'm not even from Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That that's how that can happen. Yeah. Because I imagine if if like everyone's purely Liverpool mm -hmm. to to turn colours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Yeah. That's a shady move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. When my family were young, Everton were decent. So, like now, obviously, they're, they're pretty shit. Doing all right right now, but yeah. generally, they're pretty shit. <laughs> and they always have been since I've been born. Um, but now, you wouldn't choose Everton as a Glory Hunter team. If you were just, you, you had both parents. You, as a kid, you'd probably go red. You still follow it, like, avidly? Yeah. Um, I, I don't care that much, but I watch yeah. every game. But I don't like, it doesn't upset me if we yeah. get it. Yeah. I'm like that with the Wolves now. Yeah. Like, like, I don't like the way football's gone in general. And living where I live, it's more of a rugby part of the country. Mm. So people aren't like super into football like they are in Manchester or Liverpool. But um, I watch it and I hope they win. But it yeah, doesn't ruin yeah. my day. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um, when I lived 
you know, in the Midlands, if if Wolves conceded a last minute goal, it would ruin the rest of my Saturday. Yeah. Uh, now I'm I'm over it in ten mm. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Liverpool played yesterday, we won. I'm also over the win in 10 minutes. Yeah, so just decent. Yeah. Something entertaining. Football's not what it was, though, to me. Mm. Um, now, but, like, now, but it's more money than ever, and I don't like VAR. Yeah. And what it's done yeah. to the whole atmosphere of the game, I think they need to refine that. I don't do it. Um, if you were to change your content, yeah. Well, keep it the same style, but do it in another country, but not a country where you can speak the language. So let's say you could magically learn Spanish, French, German, whatever language tomorrow. Yeah. Which country would you choose to do content in? Any country in the world. Yeah, if you could just magically speak that language. So and not I'm, US, Australia, yeah, yeah. Canada. So I'm... The most interesting language to me is German, because right. I just love the sound of it. I can, I can speak a tiny, weeny little bit of yeah. German but very poorly. Um, so I would love to improve my German, but I don't think it'd be the best country for it content. It'd be awful, because they've yeah. got privacy laws there and you can't film people in public. Really? <laughs> yeah, you can't do it. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> yeah. um, so all three, uh, Switzerland, Austria, Germany. Yeah. I think pro probably Spanish yeah. and Spanish-speaking countries, because that would be the biggest scope, yeah. I would say. <clears throat> or Arabic. Arabic or French in yeah. Africa. Yeah. Arabic yeah. would be good. Arabic would be good. Imagine, like, you know, like a white Westerner yeah. going deep into Arabic uh, communities, yeah. speaking to them in Arabic. Yeah. And, you know, you'd probably come across, obviously, every Arabic country is different, yeah. um, but you'd probably come across some uh, hurdles t trying to yeah, create yeah, yeah. that content for yeah. sure, far more than I do. That you'll see in Latin America, the lads who speak Spanish get away with more yeah and they get themselves out of dangerous situations yeah by speaking the language yeah um, and bold probably did it in, yeah. in Russia as well yeah yeah and you also get into good places because somebody might want to invite you to their house if you speak their language yeah, but yeah. I'm just going to invite some random Britain who can't speak any of their words well what one thing a hundred percent that I've realized from doing the I call it the street content yeah. that I do now is that it's, for me, it's all about interactions and yeah. characters and introducing characters that I meet. So I will only make content where I'm fluent in the language. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable saying that right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that content in countries where I don't speak the language would mean that I can't do what I'm best at. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, you've got Australia, New Zealand, Canada, uh, US, and South Africa. It's a lot of people to speak to. Yeah. So you're not going to run out. And Benidorm. And Benidorm. And Ireland as well. I forgot about that. You, yeah. did, that, you did Ireland recently. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot more to do in Ireland yeah. and um, a lot of different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Malta. Yeah. Yeah, you've got places you can go. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if it translates to views abroad. Yeah. To, to I, think, I think it's how you introduce your audience mm -hmm. to the. The content doesn't have to change, but it's the background, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. the social and environmental background that changes. And it's how you bring those people along on that slight but important transition. I don't think people understand who don't make, who don't make popular content. Maybe they make small content. It's, you don't just walk around with a camera. No. Um, neither does Bob, neither does Harold, mm. Dale, Kurt. They yeah. don't just walk around with the camera. It's not that simple. Not at all. And something that I've realised in the last month is that my time not making videos is as important mm -hmm. for making those videos as the time that I do. Yeah. I call it thinking time. Yeah. And I know that sounds really like true. creative, arty farty, like I just knew. But I've made better videos when I've took more time away from making videos. Yeah. I go, I, I, I nail down a place and an and a idea and a question yeah. and a theory, and, and and generally those videos do better. Yep. Um, yep. I've already kind of got the title in my head, yep. working title. Um, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of like latent work yeah. that goes into it. Is that the right word? Latent? I think so. I don't know. It is now. Sounds good to it's me. Fine. Yeah. I think we should uh, finish up so we can get to opening this pub. As a pub to open, and yeah. we ain't doing it.
No, I'm not doing it. So I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, man. Good. Yeah. I think people enjoy this episode. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Anything else you want to say? Not really, no. Just uh, watch more podcasts and... Uh, and subscribe to Wendell. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lot, like, a few more of our viewers could click subscribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They? Yeah. All right, good. I think that's the only time I've ever tried to um, promote subscription to my channel. An hour and a half into a video. Yeah. <laughs> when no one's watching. <laughs> With 10% people watching. All right, yeah. let's go. Sweet. Shout out to Rage Other Legends. Download using my link right now and I'll see you on the battlefield, comrade.